wanted it live. One second. And this was going live. Greetings, unsettled souls. This is Sam I.B. DeGangie doing political commentary for the media speaks. You might know me from Blasting News. You might know me from Wits News. I'm glad you're here. It's the Massive Fukushima Update. It is by far and away the biggest show that I do. And I'm glad because it gets a lot of people interested. It gets a lot of people awake or whatever. I sound like I have a cold. That's not good. Actually, I don't, thank God. Um, although, I swear to God, I walked further than Gandhi, so I probably have sinus problems of some kind. Hello, Susie. All right, um, friends, like I said, most of the people find the show via the Massive Fukushima update, and it alerts a lot of people to a lot of very important things regarding the way that it damages our health today, for instance. One of the questions I get a lot about is Mr. Trump. That is one of the areas, even though I support the man, that Donald Trump and I do not agree. Um, then again, we had very few candidates who were against nuclear power. I think uh, it's possible that Stein was one of them. But she was crazy in every other way. So you, you can't just vote on one issue. But yes, I, I do wish to answer the question publicly that Trump was more anti-nuke, or anti-nuke at all. And uh, secondly, I have this moron that's been um, patrolling my pages particularly on the media speaks, attacking me and Dana, a uh, beautiful girl by Dana, and other people that have been doing these sorts of videos. And I was going to call him out on air, but I think he's doing this mostly for attention, so I'm not going to do that for him. Rather, what I am going to do is give a plethora of facts regarding how bad Fuka ha Fukushima has been for our health and for everyone's health. And uh, that'll probably be, we're starting around the third, I got like a few, seven different segments to the show, and there's like three or four that deal with that. In a nutshell, you are not going to want to go away. You're not going to want to leave or deviate because there is a lot of information in this show. Now, I've given you time to trickle in. I've bantered enough. Let's start it. The Ashahi Sim, uh, Shimbun. <clears throat> How many of you know that the, uh, the nuclear fuel in Fukushima, they couldn't even approach it? I mean, this happened in 2011. For those of you that don't know, real quick, in 2011, a tidal wave and an earthquake uh, damaged four reactors greatly in Fukushima, nuclear reactors, and they are still spewing, and they are spewing radioactivity into the environment at high enough levels that it is posing a rather substantial risk to do everything. In, in, not just in the Japan, uh, Japan prefecture area, but well beyond it. But the documentation of the die-off in the Pacific Ocean alone speaks volumes. But one of the things I want to address here is that even robots, we've covered this before, even robots cannot get close to the melted fuel. It is so radioactive that it literally, I'm not being figurative here, it literally cooks the components of the robot. So you can imagine what it's doing to the cell structure of those who work there. And again, we have a we have a uh, a news update about that as well. All right, check this out. First contact made with melted fuel at the Fukushima plant. A probe touched melted nuclear fuel debris in a destroyed reactor at the Fukushima number one nuclear plant, a long awaited milestone in the battle toward decommissioning Tokyo Electric Power Company said on February 13th. Of course, that is uh, TEPCO, that is General Electric. So why? What do we say on this show? What do we say every time? You do not invest in GE. You do not invest in mutual funds that GE is in. If you are a fan of mutual funds, switch to infrastructure mutual funds, and that way you don't have to be giving money to people that do things like this. The rod-like probe, fitted with three centimeter long claws, lifted pieces of the nuclear fuel debris during the eight-hour operation at the bottom of the number two reactor at the plant, the utility company said. Data obtained through the investigation, such as the hardness temperature and radioactivity of the debris, will be used to develop equipment and containers for the eventual removal of the melted fuel. The probe, which was recovered after the investigation, also took pictures of the inside of the containment vessel 
no debris was taken outside the reactor, according to TEPCO. Now, what's important about this is you have to understand that th when they talk about the eventual removal of the fuel, that's like saying mankind's eventual trip to Pluto. We know it's there. We're not really sure what's around it. And we have no way to approach it. Okay, you might, you might think that that is being humorous. You might think that that's funny. But we cannot get near the fuel for any length of time whatsoever, much less come up with a machine big enough, powerful enough, to remove this. It's beyond the understanding. We don't have the technology due to the high radioactivity content that we're talking about here. The retrieval process will start in earnest at one of the reactors in 2021, according to the plan drawn up jointly by the central government of Te and TEPCO. It was the first physical contact with melted fuel at the plant since the Great Japan earthquake and tsunami in March 11, 2011. And of course, uh, it's, it's two days away, so that's why I'm doing, uh, actually it's 11 o'clock, it's about a day away. That's why I'm doing this now, so that you guys can get this information out and share it to people so that this, this travesty isn't forgotten and that it's not sold to people who are going to believe that it's somehow now under control because it is not. It is still spewing poison, which is affecting everyone hearing this. What if you're in America? Yes, okay, I'm in America. I'm in Ohio. I'm talking to you. It's in every single tuna sample taken from the Pacific Ocean, and yet how many of you can keep eating it? being told that it's a safe level of radiation. How could it be safe? They don't know how much you're eating. The utility workers said manually and uh, inserted the probe through the crack created early in the disaster on the side of the number two reactor's containment vessel. So the containment vessel has such a big hole in it just from the accident that you can put this thing in. That sounds great. <clears throat> how big is it? It resembles a prize-grabbing crane machine. My wife used to love those. At a, a game arcade was also equipped with a dosimeter and a camera. It can extend 15 meters and can lift up pieces 8 centimeters in diameter weighing 2 kilograms. Now we're talking about thousands of pounds of radioactive fuel and they have no idea how they're going to do this. They just have this little claw machine. TEPCO said the probe could not lift clay-like debris because it had been adhered to the bottom of the containment vessel. The probe touched nuclear fuel debris lying at several spots at the lattice-shaped scaffold for workers directly below the reactor's pressure vessel. The previous investigation of the number two reactor in 2017 located melted fuel debris on the scaffold, but a robot deployed to further investigation broke down on its way to the debris. In a survey last year, the utility used a rod-like probe to take images inside of it. So basically, they've just now come up with some tiny little equivalent to a 1970s robot that was able to meander and hobble its way close enough to this ridiculous thing that... In some way now, they can say, you know, well, we're, something is being done. We're approaching it. We're close to it. And not, not, don't, don't believe any of it, people. All right, listen to this. Um, again, I'm not saying don't believe they're there. Just don't believe that this containment is going to happen as quickly as they say it is. When they're projecting 40 years. That's, that's conservative. You watch. They've already backed it up 10 years. Just watch. All right, friends. Express.co.uk, Japan, on earthquake and tsunami alert after huge deep sea fish found alive by fishermen. Now, I know that this is not the most scientific story that we're going to cover today. However, we've seen a number of things that, uh, from a scientific standpoint, and we've covered these in other shows with uh, the plate tectonics and the extreme frequency of uh, earthquakes and larger earthquakes we're seeing more of than ever. It's, it's biblical what we're seeing here. This is just another another piece of hay on the on the bell if you will i'm not saying that this is necessarily true but i'm saying that this is just one more sign to take a look at japan is on alert for an earthquake or tsunami after two giant deep sea fish were caught in the coast in what many in the asian nation regard as a doomsday warning now when i first came across this i thought to myself all right well this is you know like the loch ness monster predicting an earthquake but that's not what this is 
Um, it's believed, among other things, that the temperature changes deep in the water uh, during times of earthquake activity, particularly when it's eminent. And with that being true, there's a chance that these things would, uh, these animals would move into areas where they're not normally found. That is sort of the, the big fear that we're seeing here. Two oar fish measuring between three to four meters long were caught in a fishnet after reports of them washing up dead. So that there is that to factor in too. The creatures which can grow as long as 11 meters are believed to be an indicator of doom in Japanese mythology. Um, they say that the fish which live more than a mile underwater come to the surface when a natural disaster is nearing. The Satomi Higa of the Umatians Fisheries Cooperative Association told fake news and <laughs> CNN. The two oarfish were swimming vigorously in the nets. They looked mysterious and beautiful. Before this sighting, a number of dead oarfish have washed up in Japan and Peru this year, which could also possibly be indicative of a temperature change. Since then, fears have increased that an incoming natural disaster is uh, looming for Japan. It's not, a, you, I'll tell you, looking at the pictures here, as those of you on screen share can see on the media speak, it's not a particularly pretty fish, is it? <clears throat> a dozen oar fish had washed up onto Japan's coastline in 2010 before the disaster, but scientists dispute such claims. Aozu Aquarian keeper Kisuzu Siaba told CNN last month that global warming or subtle changes in the Earth's crust could cause the current to stir and push the creatures to the surface. Now, this you know is crap for two reasons. First of all, as soon as someone starts talking about global warming, you can immediately just factor them out because they're part of the problem, not the solution. Second of all, and we'll get to that, we actually have proof that the Earth is cooling at the end of this show, so don't zone out. I warned you, there's a lot in this show. Not only that, but was there global warming back in ancient Japanese times, you stupid dunderhead? Because unless there were, it probably wasn't global warming. I don't think the samurai were driving their cars. I, I'm so sick of this. The story just said that the fish had been a harbinger of doom for throughout all of Japanese history. And now they're going to say, it must be global warming. Couldn't have been global warming if it's been happening for thousands of years. That's the problem. These global warming cultists, and they're one of the people that are pushing this ridiculous, um, thriving nuclear industry. Ridiculous. And a lot of it is being driven by... Uh, the global warming hysteria, which isn't happening. We'll get to it in a minute. All right. Now, for the ridiculous individual who has been on the media speaks talking about how there's no danger from the uh, 2011 disaster. Okay. How about healthy, holistic living? Fukushima, the untouchable eco-apocalypse that no one is talking about. It's originally rewritten with permission from, it says, Waking News. It was the most important ecological crisis the world has ever seen, and it has been underway since March 11th, 2011. Has, is still happening. Yet there is nary a mention of it in the corporate media, and no political body in the world is championing its resolution. In other words, well, you know, we have a little equivalent of a neutron star in our planet just spewing everywhere. Why should we bother to stop it, eh? The widespread denial and will for ignorance. The media politicians and the world at large seem to be engaging in extreme denial regarding Fukushima. The survey of mainstream media coverage of the fallout of this event reveals a trend, the trend of covering this story as a human interest affair, not as immediate as it truly is. In other words, everyone, just go ahead and go back to sleep. You know, nothing to see here. Move along, move along as cancer rates go through the roof. We'll get to that. Keep listening. The effects on nature are already being seen, yet even among the environmentalist factions of media, there is a strong denial of the damage already done and of what it is to come of the crisis approaches its sixth year. Some 300 tons of radioactive water is dumped into the Pacific Ocean each day. And science are showing that the catastrophe is gravely affecting the sea life and wildlife in and around the Pacific Ocean. Now, let's just take a, a brief moment to really think about this. The environmentalists, the ones who are supposed to care about the country, the ones who hate Mr. Trump so much, 
they're supposed to be up in arms whenever anything happens to the environment. Yet, miraculously, scientists were warned about the Fukushima disaster happening at Fukushima years before it happened. Begged them not to build it there. Begged them to shut it down. Begged them to build the break wall higher. They were ignored on all of those. And now the single worst disaster in all of recorded history is happening and unfolding right now. We have rabbits born without ears. We have cancer rates going through the roof. We can't find half the life that's supposed to be in the Pacific Ocean. On and on and on and on and on. The environmentalists don't have anything to say about this because, hey, it stops people from driving their car. This is ridiculous. Where are, where is everybody's brains at? The FDA maintains that there is no evidence of contamination by Fukushima-born radionuclides in the American food supply. Yet this opinion is contested by independent researchers. This is not fact. What they do many times is test for four or five elements that they know are unlikely to have been found, and they will ignore the other radionuclides like strontium, which they know is in there. Strontium-90 is a direct link to bone cancer. Look it up. They've done it since the bomb testing days. A report by Fairwinds Energy Education says that the, can the cancer is on the rise in the areas around the failed power plant and that millions will die in the coming years as a result. The second report, it says, received from Japan, proves that the incidence of thyroid cancer is approximately 230 times higher than normal in the Fukushima prefecture. So what's the bottom line? The cancers already occurring in Japan are just the tip of the iceberg. I'm sorry to say that the worst is yet to come. Now, said Bonehead on my comment line was insinuating that we are finding more cancers in children, particularly children, because we're testing more. So it's normal to have Thousands upon thousands of children diagnosed with either thyroid cancer or precancerous tumors. And if the whole world just tested more, the whole world would find that there are hundreds of thousands or millions of children walking around with thyroid cancer. B.S. If that's the case, why would it only be happening in Japan? What also happens in Belarus, yeah, maybe Chernobyl. I cannot believe how mind-blowingly dumb our world has become. I, I just can't. As election year in the U.S. approaches its dramatic climax, it has been striking, again, this is, uh, from, this is just prior, it has been striking to observe that neither of the two major parties are tied, and I've talked about that in the past, but then, again, this is a couple of years old. The filtered water is full of tritium, a radioactive version of hydrogen. When two neutrons are added to the element, it becomes unstable, prone to emitting electrons. Tritium bonds with oxygen, just like normal hydrogen does, to produce radioactive tritiated water. It's impractical, or at least extremely difficult and expensive, to separate tritiated water from normal water. And again, the... the Machines made in France that were supposed to do this cannot do it. As a matter of fact, they can get out most other forms of radiation, but not tritium. So final thoughts. No one of significant importance is talking about the crisis or working to alleviate it as a national and international priority. We know exactly what is going on here. It's very, again, there's a video here you can look up, media. Fukushima, what the media and governments are not telling you. It's not hard to find these facts out. And I wanted to do a significant part of today's show addressing exactly what it is that we are looking at here. And again, about halfway through here, let me remind you that this is listener supported. All the work I'm doing, everything I'm laying out for you, I don't get one red cent in any way, shape, matter, or form unless you guys are kind enough to donate. And you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Every penny that you give to me, I put towards the show, towards doing more shows. I've been gone like a week. 
uh, actually two weeks, it's been a minute, uh, things have been getting very expensive, and I run this show now by myself, so please support the show if you can. Listen to this, friends, Japan Today, Japanese swimmer star Aiki diagnosed with leukemia. Okay, Mr. Dude who haunts my comment line, is it also normal for perfectly healthy people Olympic special Olympic stars to be felled with cancer. Yeah, I'm sure it happens. There are millions of I get it. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen to any. You probably give me a whole list of people that it did. Doesn't it strike you kind of weird that it's a bone slash, bone marrow slash uh, I guess leukemia blood cancer? Doesn't that strike you as a little odd since blood cancer? is exactly the kinds of cancer, along with thyroid, that were predicted by me and a plethora of people far smarter than me. When this happened, we said within a handful of years, well, talking 2011, seven years ago, what are we seeing? Leukemia, just like predicted. Is that a coincidence? That she's in the water all the time? Is that is that... Is that beyond the realm of scope of reality for you to notice this problem? Anyone? Tokyo, Japanese swimmer Rikako Aiki, who won six titles at last year's Asian Games, I guess it wasn't Olympic, but you know what I meant, is Jakarta and was considered a strong contender for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. I was close. Said on Tuesday, she had been diagnosed with leukemia. 18 years old, that's just, that's, that's freaking common, right? 18-year-old swimmers who likely have a far better diet than anybody listening to this does, right? That's common. The 18-year-old was named Japanese Swimmer of the Year last year after her second breaking exploits at the Jakarta Pool. And again, I understand that perfectly healthy people get leukemia. So if you want to chalk this up to coincidence, we've got a whole bunch of other coincidences in the last story that you have to explain, but I digress. I was feeling ill and urgently came home from Australia, underwent testing, and the diagnosis was leukemia. I can't believe it. I'm still in a state of confusion, but with treatment, this disease can be cured. And again, the, the, we're talking about the whole, the whole of the ocean here. Are you seeing the problem? She's still hoping to be able to compete in Tokyo. Uh, said they would be able to discover the disease in ordinary circumstances. They wouldn't have been able to. They were able to find her irregularities because she was swimming. In that sense, we were able to detect the disease early. So, all right, fine. You can go ahead and chalk that up to, you know, coincidence. All right, well, let's go for one more coincidence before we go to the dumby of the day, shall we? How about this one from the Fukushima Diary? That yet... Another Fukushima worker has died with no details announced. February 21st, 2019. Now, we covered at the last show, we covered the fact that when you see the some of the workers with uh, decimeters that are solidly black on their uniform, that's because they have been juiced so badly that they're gone. I mean, they are going to die. That's, that's the level of poison that they've already accepted into their body in an effort to bring this disaster under control. Or try to. All right, well, let's, let's take a look at this. On the Daily Report, uh, 122 2019, TEPCO briefly announced a Fukushima worker was confirmed to be dead on the previous day. The report has only two or three lines. None of the details is revealed, including the cause of death. Well, why would they want to hide that, right? It's either extremely unsafe or it's, it's cancer related, heart related, something to do with the blood or the thyroid, something to do with the, the way the heart works. All, all caused by nuclear poison. Even the press release does not mention the cause of death. The daily reports of the following days entirely ignored this. Well, how many times do you hear about somebody dying at a plant and they don't say why? I don't remember too many instances. Maybe this person just happened to die. Okay, let me ask you a question. Name another plant anywhere you know in the world where this many people die. You know, maybe maybe it's maybe some sweatshop in some third world hellhole that makes money by outsourced American jobs. But anybody else? Tepco, General Electric. Can you name me another plant where people keep dying just 
as they go to work each day? If there's no great fear here, because I'm happy to hear you seem so many people seem to want to put ridiculous things on my comment. Please, please use your great brain to explain this to me. I don't hear anything. It's like crickets to me. The report leads in the afternoon, 121, 2019, a Fukushima worker at a collaborating company fell unconscious. The worker was transported as emergency. However, he was confirmed to be dead during the day. So I hope now I've covered just a few examples that show exactly how caustic this situation is. And now that I have, it's the dumb of the day. Well, for those of you that don't know, the dumb of the day is the stupidest story that I've come across uh, from the time I did the last show to this one. Once a month, we do the dunce cap of the month as well. That's going to be the next show, probably within the next seven days. Uh, again, the money to help mail them out. They get expensive. Extremely helpful, and you can help me out at the correct views at hotmail.com. See PayPal. The dumb day of the day, once again, going to the global warming crowd, particularly because we have more proof of no warming. Forbes. Sorry, global warming alarmists. The earth is cooling. Peter Fiora. Climate change itself is already in the process of definitively rebutting climate alarmists who think the use of fossil fuel is fuels is causing take two who think the human use of fossil fuels is causing ultimately catastrophic global warming that is because natural climate cycles have already turned from warming to cooling global temperatures have already been declining and more than 10 for more than 10 years again the last 10 years no warming and global temperatures will continue to decline for another two decades or more. This is one of the most interesting conclusions to come out of the 7th International Climate Change Conference sponsored by Heartland Institute last week in Chicago. People say I don't give sources. Are you listening? I attended and served as one of the speakers talking about the economic implications of high-cost energy. The conference featured serious natural science, contrary to the self-interested political science you hear from government finance global warming alarmists who seek to justify widely expanded regulatory and taxation powers for government bodies or government body wannabes, such as the United Nations. In other words, it's all about collecting that money. It's not about actual science. When actual science is employed, this is what you find. You can see for yourself as the conference speeches are online. And there's a link to it here on Forbes. What you will see are calm, dispassionate presentations by serious pedigreed scientists discussing and explaining reams of data. In sharp contrast to these climate realists, the climate alarmists have long admitted that they cannot defend their theory that humans are causing catastrophic global warming in the public debate. With the conference presentations online, let's see if the alarmists really do have any response. The Heartland Institute has effectively become the international headquarters for the climate realists as analog to the UN's International Panel on Climate Change. It says it has achieved that status through these international climate conferences and the publication of its climate change reconsidered volumes produced in conjunction with the non-governmental international panel on climate change. Those climate change reconsidered volumes are an, an, an equivocally thorough scientific rebuttal to the regular irregular assessment reports by the UN's IPCC. You can ask any advocate of human-caused catastrophic global warming what their response is to climate change reconsidered. If they have none, they are not qualified to discuss the issue intellectually. For example, temperatures dropped. Are you listening? Are you still with me? Anybody listening? Comment. Let me know. For example, temperatures dropped. That means went down. For you global, I know you global warming people are a little slow. I'll help you along. Dropped steadily from the 1940s to the late 1970s. The popular press has been talking about a coming ice age at the time. Ice ages have cryptically occurred uh, roughly every 10,000 years with a new one actually due around now. 
Central to those natural cycles is the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Every 25 to 30 years, the oceans undergo a natural cycle where the colder water churns to replace the warmer water at the surface. And that affects global temperatures by the fractions of a degree that we have seen. And that's all we've seen, by the way. The PDO was cold from the late 1940s to the late 1970s, and it was warm from the late 1970s to the late 1990s, similar to the Atlantic multi cedal Oscillation AMO. In 2000, the UN's IPCC predicted that global temperatures would rise by one degree Celsius by 2010. Was that based on climate science or political science to scare the public into accepting costly anti-industrial regulations and taxes? Don Easterbrook, it says, Professor Emetris of Geology at Western Washington University knew the answer. He publicly predicted in 2000 that global temperatures would decline by 2010. Um, so did I, but who's going to remember that, eh? He made the prediction because he knew in the PDO had turned cold in 1999, something the political scientists at the UN's IPCC did not know and did not think was significant, if they did. Well, the results are in, and the winter is, the winner is Doc, Don, excuse me, Don Easterbrook. Easterbrook also spoke at the Heartland Conference with a presentation entitled, Are Forecasts of the 20-Year Cooling Trend Credible? Could have told you the answer to that one. Watch that online, and you will see how scientists are supposed to talk. Cool, rational, logical analysis of the data. A full explanation of it all. All I have ever seen from global warming alarmists, by contrast, is a political public relations, personal attacks, ad hominem arguments, and name-calling, combined with admissions that they cannot defend their views in public debate. Easterbrook, rather, shows that by 2010 to 2000, a prediction from the IPCC was wrong by well over a degree, and the gap was widening. That's a big miss for the forecast just 10 years away when the same folks expect us to take seriously their predictions for 100 years into the future. Howard Hayden, professor of physics emetrist at the University of Connecticut, showed in his presentation at the conference that based on the historical record, a, doubting, a doubling of CO2 could be expected to produce a 2 degrees Celsius temperature increase. Such a doubling would take most of the country and the temperature impact of increased concentrations of CO2 declines logarithmically. You can see his presentation as well. Because, CO, because PDO cycles last 25 to 30 years, it says, Easterbrook expects the cooling trend to continue for another two decades or so. In fact, documents 40 such alternating periods of warming and cooling over the past 500 years have taken place with similar data going back 15,000 years. He further expects the flipping of the ADO to add to the current downward trend. Now, let me tell you for what, what my experience has showed me you're going to see here in no uncertain terms. When the cooling happens, those who have been championing this fake science, those idiots are going to be the first people out of the box to say, well, it's because of you know we're planting trees, charging people more for gas, and selling carbon taxes, all these great things, and carbon credits. And we caused it to happen. We caused the temperature to go down. And then when it naturally goes up again, half a generation from now, then they're once again going to come out and say, well, you know, we've been burning fossil fuels again, and now we can see global warming coming back. Never mentioning that this has been happening for 15,000 years. Yes, that is before the combustion engine, for those of you that may not know. We are currently experiencing a surprising long period with low sunspot activity. That is associated in the Earth history with even lower, colder temperatures. The pattern has been during a period known as the Dalton Minimum from 1790 to 1830, which saw temperature readings decline by 2 degrees in a 20-year period and the, and the noted year without summer in 1816, which may have had something, uh, which may have had other contributing short-term causes. Even worse was the period of the Maunder Minimum from 1645 to 1715, which saw only about 50 sunspots during one 30-year period within the cycle, compared to about 40,000 to 50,000 sunspots in modern times. The Maunder Minimum coincided with the coldest part of the Little Ice Age, with the Earth suffered about 1350 to 1850, 
the modern minimum was sharply reduced. It, it sharply reduced agricultural output and widespread human suffering caused disease and premature death. Are you starting to get the point here, friends? Man-made global warming is a provable lie. And yet we're using it. So many people are using it to encourage the spread of nuclear power plants. And we've just done a whole show on what that can cause. So I hope this has been helpful to everyone. I hope it's awoken people. Hit share, hit subscribe, and don't forget to donate if you can at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Good night, friends. God bless.